Tonight is going to be a night stone cold that Paul White will never, ever forget. Let's go corporation style. What the hell? Oh, here we go. Now I'm going to wrestle Hogan here tonight for the world title. Oh my! You God. make it a three-way dance. There's a heavyweight match. I'm in the dance. You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, the magic. Welcome back to Reliving the War, welcome to April 5th, 1999, and welcome to a new era for World Championship Wrestling. Tonight we've got Nitro live from Las Vegas, Nevada, while WWF Raw comes from Long Island, New York. They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, and this new Nitro set should have stayed in Vegas because all it does is give me horrible flashbacks. I kinda associate this set and the next Nitro set with the bad times, it reminds me of WCW at their very worst. But if there is one thing this series made me realise, it's that we tend to remember things that happened 25 years ago a lot differently. It's my hope we still find some hidden classics within this era of Monday Nitro, so let's start at the very beginning and take a look for ourselves. We now have a two-man commentary team of Tony Schiavone and Bobby Heenan, and it also looks like Schiavone's updated his hairstyle to go along with this new Nitro set. Both look absolutely shit. Mike Tanay will join the commentary team for the final 30 minutes or so by the way, but it appears that Larry Sabisco will no longer be part of the Nitro broadcast team moving forward. Bill Goldberg's walking around with a lottery tumbler, a hopper, yeah he's got one of those and he's walking around backstage looking all angry. He comes out for an interview with Mean Gene Okerlund and Billy Boy says back at Starcade he was on the receiving end of the ultimate screw job. Only in pro wrestling would that statement be acceptable. Goldberg says he's taken matters into his own hands, he's gonna hold the Goldberg lottery tonight, and whoever's name gets selected will be Goldberg's next victim. Looks like we're completely ignoring that Bret Hart spear from last week. Kevin Nash comes out and Big Sexy says people won't be talking about Bill in 10 years time, they'll be talking about the guy who ended Goldberg's streak. Goldberg says Kevin's living in the past and to prove Goldberg wrong, Big Kev tells Bill to forget his little lottery because at Spring Stampede this week, Bill Goldberg's gonna face Kevin Nash. Goldberg accepts this match, so we're gonna see Nash vs Goldberg 2 at the pay per view this week. Just another quick reminder here that Spring Stampede's gonna go live on my channel on the 26th of December. This Sunday I've got a Christmas special to look at and by god you're gonna join me. Ric Flair tells Arn Anderson to go and sort this out, it appears that Rick didn't know Nash was gonna challenge Goldberg. Back in the ring we've got the first Nitro match of this new era, Hardcore Hack vs Kendall Windham, and Tony Schiavone just had to let every fan know watching at home that he really likes chastity schoolgirl attire, the man had absolutely no shame. Fans chanting boring during a hardcore match is never a good sign and fans laughing at Hack taking this bump right here isn't a good sign either. The audience got into it a bit more when Hack used his kendo stick but overall the match wasn't good. Hack won via pinfall after performing a Russian leg sweep. The next match saw Conan take on Lismark Jr and while the outcome was predictable, the in-ring action was a lot better. Lismark Jr made one too many mistakes and Conan was able to capitalise. The rolling clothesline followed by a tequila sunrise was enough to give K-Dog the victory. Hype videos were also played for Ming and Scotty Steiner. These two are going to face each other very soon in a US title tournament semi-final match and it's going to be awesome. Nitro continues on with some backstage shenanigans, while over on Raw we've got X-Pac and Kane vs Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett. X-Pac and Kane have been wronged by Triple H in China, so these two are gonna join forces to try to take out the former leader of D-Generation X and his bodyguard, valet, girlfriend, whatever. 
I mentioned last week that Triple H vs X-Pac should have been saved for the pay-per-view and even though Pac vs Hunter is announced here for Backlash, it doesn't change how I felt last week. A promo from Triple H would have worked a lot better and the Raw main event shouldn't have happened. The tag champs issued an open challenge on Sunday Night Heat, X-Pac and Kane accepted, and while X-Pac did do well against both Owen and Jeff in the early go-on, it quickly goes downhill for the former European champion. As the tag team champions continue to single out X-Pac, we learn that The Rock and Steve Austin are going to face each other again at the Backlash pay-per-view. We think Kane's getting that all-important hot tag when he breaks free from a Jeff Jarrett sleeper, but Owen gets tagged in first and Pac continues to struggle in this Raw opening match. Owen gets a little too confident though and going for a top rope attack, and finally the big red machine comes in and he gets a big babyface pop as he takes out the tag team champions. X-Pac runs back in to hit a bronco buster on Owen while Double J takes a chokeslam from Kane. The crowd are then stunned when Kane goes to chokeslam his own tag team partner, but Kane ends up dropping Pac on top of Double J and the referee counts to three. We have new tag team champions on Raw's War. Kane and X-Pac are definitely an unlikely tag team, but not only are they tag team champions after just one match, they are also extremely popular after just one match. Well done lads. Backstage, Vince McMahon tells Shane that he doesn't want to be involved in tonight's show. McMahon doesn't care about Austin, he doesn't care about the big show, all he cares about is Stephanie's welfare. Vince tells Shane to do what he needs to do because Vince just doesn't care. So Shane tells the corporation that he's calling the shots tonight. According to the boy wonder, Stone Cold and Big Show are in for a night they'll never forget. Right, over on Nitro. Goldberg walks into Ric Flair's office and he's surprised to see Lex Luger and Elizabeth having a meeting with the WCW president. Goldberg says, what's this all about? And Nitro takes a commercial break. We come back to see Arn Anderson telling Kevin Nash to go to Flair's office. Big Sexy just wants a cup of coffee, but Anderson seems pretty adamant that Nash heads over to the office right this minute. So Kev walks in and Nitro cuts away again. We have no idea what Flair and Nash talked about. We come back to see Nash and Flair acting quite friendly towards each other and this is something Hulk Hogan doesn't care for all that much. Kevin says he was just talking business and trying to get more money and he tells Hogan not to worry. We cut away again to see Nash talking to Charles Robinson, the referee who screwed Hogan out of the WCW Championship at Uncensored. Hogan sees Nash talking to the dirty official and Hogan wants answers. Big Kev hasn't been returning his calls recently and Nash makes mention of what Hogan said to Tory last week. Hulk says he was just trying to swerve Tory, it's no big deal. And Hulk also says that Nash has a completely new attitude these days. Kev says it's all good, the band's still together and he's just tired. And Hogan accepts this explanation before walking off. When Hulk turns his back though, Nash pulls this face right here. It's clear these two are no longer on the same page. Old Chinese proverb says, a t-shirt is worth a thousand words. God damn it, pal. While the Undertaker's trying to kidnap my sweet daughter Stephanie, that no good dirty dog, Hulk Hogan, thinks he's being smart over on Nitro, trying to become a baby face again. Let me make something crystal clear, pal. I made Hulk Hogan. I created Hulkamania. I could destroy Hogan. And that shithole they call WCW anytime I want. So buy the shirt, support wrestling bios, and let's get back to our scheduled programming. Thank you for your undivided attention. We've got a corporation promo over on Raw next, while Ric Flair talks about Spring Stampede on Nitro. Shane shows everyone a replay from Raw last week, it's Austin and the Big Show beating up the corporation after the main event. Shane wants to make Big Show pay for his crimes, so tonight the big man gets put in a 2 on 1 match, Big Show vs Triple H in The Rock. Rock and Hunter were once bitter enemies, but while working for Vince McMahon's corporation, the two are going to join forces. Hunter says the fans have wanted to see this tag team, it's going to happen tonight on Raw, and he also says the Big Show has a whole lot of big fat hairy ass for the corporation to kick. Not an image I appreciate being in my head right now. Rock still got Stone Cold Smoke and Skull built, he doesn't plan on handing it back, and Rock says he wants to check Big Show into the Smackdown Hotel, but Show would probably break the toilet seat. 
Rock's gonna take both his feet and shove him up Big Show's, well, you get the point. And something to take note here is the fact that The Rock refers to himself as the people's champion, not the corporate champion. He still stops sing along with The Rock as usual, but you just know he's gonna turn babyface again pretty soon. Rock asks Big Show if he smells what The Rock's cooking. The big boss man, who we all thought died at WrestleMania, is back with us again tonight on Raw and he's helping Tess put the smoke and skull belt around Rock's waist. Shane wants the production guys to put a photo of the belt on the Titantron just to aggravate Stone Cold, and Shane says he's gonna order that photo to get displayed at random times during the night just to remind everyone that Rock owns a piece of Stone Cold. Shane thought all this was great, but Vince McMahon couldn't have cared less. Vince wonders if his son's seeking a pat on the back or something, and even Stephanie McMahon says it's probably not a good idea to further provoke Austin. Vince tells Shane to chill out, and Shane looks a little disappointed. On Nitro, Ric Flair thinks Kevin Nash vs Goldberg at Spring Stampede's a wonderful idea. He praises Big Sexy for taking the initiative and challenging Goldberg at the pay per view, and Flair wants to put Nash vs Goldberg in the main event spot at the big show in Tacoma this weekend. Rick reveals that the original plan was to have another Hogan vs Flair main event at the pay per view, but seeing as the plans have changed, Rick wants to give Hogan his title shot tonight on Monday Nitro. Hollywood runs down to the ring and he goes to smack Flair with his weight belt. Hogan gladly accepts this title shot tonight on Nitro, and Flair says he'll take the opportunity away from Hulk if Wood from the Hood lays a hand on him before the main event. Hogan says the world belt was created for him, it was Hogan who made the belt relevant. Ok Hulk. And when Hogan leaves Las Vegas tonight, he's gonna leave with his world title. Flair says that's fine, because tonight will be the last time Flair and Hogan's name are gonna share the marquee. This is gonna be Hogan's last chance. Diamond Dallas Page comes out and DDP says Hogan vs Flair is definitely a main event that's worthy of the MGM grant, but what would make it even better is if DDP gets involved and Flair changes it to a triple threat encounter. Both Flair and Hogan seem to have no issue with this, but things get a bit out of hand when Goldberg makes an appearance. Goldberg, of course, wants in on this match. Actually, he flat out demands to be in it. And when Flair reminds Goldberg that the Nature Boy calls the shots around here, Billy Boy decides to throw Slick Rick across the ring. Flair ends up leaving, but before he walks back through the curtain, he tells a kid in the audience to shut up, and he also accepts this four way match tonight in the Nitro main event Flair vs. Hogan vs. DDP vs. Goldberg. Hogan and Goldberg then make a pact to take out Flair and DDP during this main event match. Hogan believes this match should come down to himself and Billy Boy, so we'll see how this all plays out at the end of Nitro tonight. Ivory cuts a promo next on Raw. Over on Nitro, we've got Scott Steiner vs Ming, the manliest match that ever happened on WCW TV. Ivory addresses Terry Runnels and Jackie. She says Jackie's tough and Jackie's proven herself to be tough, but Terry hasn't done a thing to back up all her trash talk. She did burn Ivory's face with a lit cigar, but she hasn't stepped inside the ropes for a proper fight. Ivory wants Terry to come down to the ring, Terry shows up, and what do you know, we're gonna see Terry fight here tonight on Ah, uh, no we're not. Ivory rips Terry's shirt off and Jerry Lawler blows a load all over the announce desk. The lights go out in the arena and the women get out of harm's way because The Undertaker's here along with his Ministry of Darkness. The whole faction make their way down to the ring and Taker says he knows Vince and Stephanie are watching backstage right now. Taker tells Vince to hold his daughter tight because tonight on Raw there's gonna be another sacrifice. Ooh. This won't be just any sacrifice, a certain beautiful young woman will become one with the ministry, she'll be taken from her family and she'll break her father's heart when she accepts the Lord of Darkness as her saviour. Backstage, Vince sends Patterson and Briscoe out to find more security guards. He then comes to the conclusion that he might have to give Undertaker what he wants, that being control of the WWF, and this statement makes Shane get up and leave the room. Shane can't believe his dad's giving in like this. After a commercial break, the Stooges come back with more security men, and Vince tells Stephanie she doesn't need to worry. If I were Stephanie, I'd be absolutely shitting myself right about now. On Nitro, Scotty Steiner says DDP's a liar. If Paige wanted revenge against Scott so badly, he should have entered this US title tournament. DDP also agreed to the 30 day Kimberly stipulation back at Super Brawl 9, according to Scott Steiner, and DDP isn't living up to his end of the bargain. 
Scott says if Paige wants another match, then Dallas has to put Kimberly up for just one night. It'll only take one night for Kim to realize that Scott's the big bad booty daddy and Paige will become nothing more than a memory. Out comes the minger, the winner of this match goes to Spring Stampede to wrestle for the US title. We start with a few stiff forearms from Big Papa Pump and Ming replies with a few hard knife edge chops. Scott takes a time out and the match resumes with a clothesline from Ming. Let's call it the minger line. And Scott decides at this very moment that he's not all that tough and he wants to shake Ming's hand. This unfortunately doesn't work and Ming goes on offense once again, but Scott fires back with a belly to belly before sending his opponent out of the ring. Ming gets wrecked on the outside, Scott's now firmly in control. Back inside the ropes we see a body slam and an elbow drop from Big Papa Pump and this gets followed up with a backbreaker. Steiner then gets his opponent up for a top rope suplex but Ming fights out of it and we see a diving clothesline. We then see more hard chops from Ming followed by more Minger lines. Scotty takes a sidewalk slam and here we go, it's time for the Tongan death grip. Scott gets out of this deadly hold by performing a low blow. Low blows must be completely legal now in WCW. Big Papa Pump pulls off an overhead belly to belly suplex and even though Ming clearly has a foot on the bottom rope, Scott Steiner still wins the match via pinfall. I was probably expecting more here but I still feel about 70% more manly after watching this contest. On Thunder this past week, the man called Sting got advertised for this week's episode of Nitro. Apparently Sting has a message for fans of WCW and the commentators believe they spotted Sting in the rafters but it's just some random dude who walks around the arena wearing a long leather jacket. Hardcore Holly vs Al Snow's our next match on Raw, over on Nitro, Hacksaw Jim Duggan wrestles Lenny Lane. The Raw match is not for the Hardcore Championship nor is it a Hardcore match. The referee has to stop Sparky Plug from using a steel chair but he was still able to pull off this very impressive dropkick back inside the ropes. Al took a vertical suplex, he replied with a flying crossbody. Hardcore Holly comes back with a swinging neckbreaker but Bob was simply outperformed in this matchup. It ends when Al hits a snowplow on the Hardcore Champion, so you'd assume Mr Snow would now be first in line to receive a Hardcore title shot. Steve Williams comes down after the final bell to suplex both competitors. JR cheers his boy on while Steve dishes out some punishment and the crowd didn't take too kindly to Dr Death showing up at all. Back in the production truck, Shane McMahon orders the producers to show Austin's smoking skull belt on the Titan Tron. He thinks he's being smart but he's really coming across as a complete jackass. And check this out, Christian's getting punished by The Undertaker for giving away Stephanie's location last week on Raw. I could be wrong here but it looks like Edge isn't too comfortable with this seeing as his BFF's taken quite the whipping from the Lord of Darkness. So, we've got the in-ring return of Hacksaw Jim Duggan over on Nitro. Hacksaw got diagnosed with kidney cancer around 8 months ago but he got the all clear and he's coming back to work tonight in Las Vegas. Old Hacksaw's had quite a lot of health issues but the guy has an unbeatable spirit that I don't think gets celebrated enough. Hacksaw Jim Duggan's the fucking man. He wipes Lenny out with a few punches and the crowd chant USA following a double axe handle. Lenny thinks going to the outside might be a good idea but Duggan stays firmly in control and the commentators learn that they're now in the danger zone while sitting at ringside. I wonder if Shivani and company preferred sitting up by the stage. Hacksaw lays in a few punches, Lane takes a clothesline, Duggan gets back to business with a devastating chin lock before moving over to a hammer lock and Lenny then gets suplexed, complete domination from Hacksaw. The match ends with a twirling body slam from Duggan followed by the old glory knee drop and Hacksaw looks genuinely happy to be back in the ring after these serious health issues that he just went through. Welcome back to reliving the war Hacksaw, we expect nothing but 5 star matches from this point forward. The New Age Outlaws take on the Brood next on Raw while the NWO take part in a battle royal over on Nitro. Christian did not come to the ring with Edge and Gangrel for this tag team match, the poor guy's back must be tore up pretty badly. We started off with Billy Gunn and Gangrel in the ring and Billy floored his opponent with this dropkick right here and then we just go into the standard New Age Outlaws tag team routine with Rhodey getting singled out and Billy begging for a hot tag. I know I say this as a negative and indeed when you're paying close attention and taking notes on these matches you do notice things like this that you maybe didn't notice before but it's hard to argue the results as the crowd go absolutely nuts when Road Dog finally tags in his partner. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Christian walks down the ringside and Road Dog ends up throwing him inside the ropes. Billy Gunn then hits a Famouser on Christian and Billy wins via pinfall by pinning a guy who wasn't even involved in the match. The commentators say this is going to piss The Undertaker off even more. These brood boys are messing up big time and if I were Christian I'd probably call a taxi right about now. On Thunder this past week, Hogan admitted to stirring the pot within the end of the old black and white, but he only did it to see who had what it really takes to lead the group. Everyone passed with flying colours apparently, so tonight on Nitro, the true leader of the group will finally be decided after a good old fashioned battle royal. Last man standing becomes the leader of the end of the old black and white. Stevie Ray's gotta win this one because he's wearing a sick hat and we all know what they say about a wrestler wearing a hat. He, uh, he, he usually wins battle royal matches. All four men go at it and there's no alliances here. Everyone fights one another before we see the first elimination. And here it is, Vincent, the longest serving NWO member of this battle royal, will not be the new leader of the group. An alliance does get formed between Horace and Brian Adams. Stevie Ray must be a threat, so these lads want to eliminate Stevie as soon as possible. Stevie performs a double clothesline and he takes out both men. His chances then look better when Adams and Horace begin fighting. Horace almost gets eliminated here when Brian lifts him up for a press slam, but a rake to the face and a clothesline from Stevie leads to Brian getting eliminated next. Horace then tries to get an early advantage and he tries to get Stevie out of the ring immediately after Brian Adams got eliminated, but the plan backfires and Horace is our battle royal runner up. Stevie Ray is the new official leader of the NWO black and white and it's from this point on where the NWO begins to fizzle out. We'll still see the NWO logo on TV and guys will still represent both sides of the group, but this is it guys, this is where the end truly begins. JR interviews Steve Austin and JR wants to know why the smoking skull belt means so much to Stone Cold. Austin says he uses the belt as a way to piss Vince McMahon off and Austin also says if the corporation want to keep provoking him then it's gonna cost Vince McMahon a lot of money, more on this later on. Saturn and Raven take on Kidman and Rey Mysterio next on Nitro. On Raw we've got Shamrock vs Viscera and Mankind vs Val Venus. I was able to squeeze in two Raw matches here because the Shamrock vs Viscera match was really short. Shamrock runs into the ring and he lights Big Vis up with multiple punches and kicks. Viscera fights back and he's able to perform a fallen power slam. Shamrock kicks out of the follow up cover and he stupidly goes for a body slam. This doesn't work out of course and Viscera goes back on offense briefly. Though a missed corner attack lets Kenny Boy throw more punches at his opponent. Ken hits an impressive belly to belly, the lights then go out and the Undertaker's music plays. Ken gets attacked by the whole Ministry of Darkness, including Christian, and the Undertaker watches all this go down while standing at the entranceway. The Ministry end up carrying Shamrock out of the arena while Shane McMahon tells the corporation not to take action. Shane reasons that this is likely a trap and there's nothing the corporation can do right now. So Ken gets carried into the Ministry's sweet ride and Ken Shamrock has been abducted. This wouldn't have happened if Kenny Boy stayed in the Mavug Dojo by the way. Mick Foley then took on Val Venus in our next Raw match and Mick says he just made the cover of Newsday in New York City. Val Venus cares not for this accomplishment so the match gets underway and Venus gets knocked out of the ring. Mankind lets Venus get back inside the ropes but Venus isn't so gracious when he attacks Mick in the corner. Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole then talk about a recent ESPN documentary that looked into the world of pro wrestling recently and Jerry Lawler says it was nothing more than a hatchet job. The King says WWF Raw has been destroying Monday Night Football recently and this is why ESPN and parent company ABC released the documentary. I'm going to cover the documentary soon on the channel by the way so please subscribe if you want to see what it's all about. I've never watched it myself so I'm pretty curious about it. About this special with Vince McMahon gets advertised in the middle of this match, Vince was apparently going to go after ESPN and ABC on this program. Meanwhile we've got Mick Foley reversing a suplex and it's now time to go into the match finish. Venus pulls off a spine buster and he signals for a money shot. Mankind hits the ropes and the big Valbuski gets absolutely wrecked. We then see a mandible claw without Mr. Socko and this makes Venus fall out of the ring and on the outside Mick keeps the pressure on by smacking Val's head off the ring steps. 
Back in the ring, Mankind pulls off his double arm DDT and credit to Val Venus, he was so good at selling DDTs. We then see a Mr. Socko mandible claw and Mankind, still in his referee shirt from WrestleMania, wins our match via submission. Backstage, the lights begin to flicker in Vince McMahon's dressing room. This freaks Vince and Stephanie out quite a bit, and we also see the Ministry of Darkness having a team meeting. It's spooky stuff. Judging by the talent involved in this Nitro tag team match, this should be a good one. Ray goes full throttle at the opening bell and Saturn's in trouble in the early going, but Raven runs in to help his partner and already we're seeing a doomsday device from the challengers. The commentators wonder why Saturn didn't go for a pin, but clearly Perry and Raven want to dish out more punishment. Already Ray's desperate to tag out and he gets a chance to do so and Saturn misses a leg drop. Kidman comes in hitting both Raven and Saturn with drop kicks. Perry then takes a double underhook facebuster while Raven takes a tornado DDT. And the tag champions then pull off tandem aerial attacks that get the crowd all fired up. After a commercial break, we've got Saturn dumping Kidman out of the ring with an overhead belly to belly suplex. This looked incredible. Things get even worse for Kidman when Raven hits his signature drop toe hold on a steel chair, but Ray's right there to break up Raven's cover. The crowd try to will Kidman back into the match as Raven delivers a front suplex while Saturn flies through the air with a frog splash to Kidman's back. But the break comes when Raven foolishly tries to powerbomb Kidman. Billy Kidman refuses to be powerbombed. Ray gets the hot tag, he goes to work on Raven and Saturn. He thinks he's being smart by delivering a Bronco Buster to Saturn, but Raven has the perfect counter for that particular move. Oh boy. Still, Ray refuses to stay down even after getting his balls pulverized and he manages to drop kick Saturn. But the referee also goes down here and this creates a problem for the challengers. Saturn hits the Death Valley driver, there's no referee to count the fall, so here comes Benoit and Malengo to attack Saturn and Raven. Saturn takes the diving headbutt, Malenko pulls Mysterio on top of Perry, and the tag team champions retain their titles on Monday Nitro. This makes no sense, Benoit and Malenko were scheduled to face Saturn and Raven at Spring Stampede. You'd assume that would have been a title match if Raven and Saturn defeated Kidman and Mysterio here tonight on Nitro, but anyway, that's how it ended and the match was still pretty good. The Godfather wrestles Goldust next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Chris Jericho vs Booker T. Goldust gets offered one of the Godfather's creatures, but because he literally sniffed one of the hoes, Godfather decided to beat the shit out of Goldust instead. Godfather goes to work on the IC champion and in the middle of the match, Dustin went out for another sneaky sniff. He just really likes the smell of hookers, I guess. But Godfather makes Goldust pay with a big boot followed by a back suplex. Goldust then gets a ride on the whole train just before Godfather goes out to attack the Blue Meanie, and this one ends in a countout when neither man makes it back inside the ropes in good time. The creatures try to attack Meanie while Godfather's busy with Goldust, and that's it really, absolute garbage and a complete waste of TV time. Back in Vince's private room, the lights begin to flicker once again. They go completely out this time though when Stephanie screams for her dad. Raw goes to a commercial break immediately afterwards, so we aren't sure if The Undertaker got Little Miss McMahon or not. Chris Jericho was eliminated from this US title tournament but he got back in thanks to Kurt Hennig getting injured. It doesn't really matter though because Booker won this match following interference from Scott Steiner. Jericho was looking pretty good here too, he was able to pull off his springboard dropkick and he dodged the spinning back kick when Booker got up, but it went downhill for Chris after missing a lion salt and taking an axe kick. Booker performs the Hardham sidekick and he signals for the heat seeker, this is when Big Papa Pump runs down to the ring and even though Scott fails to do any damage, Nick Patrick still awards the match to Booker T. This means we've got Booker vs Scott Steiner for the US title at Spring Stampede. Say goodbye to Chris Jericho though, this is his final televised match in WCW. He wasn't done with the company, but he did tell WCW he wasn't signing a new contract and Bischoff decided to take him off TV. Chris was then forced to lose every single one of his house show matches up until July 99, but don't worry, we'll be seeing the Ayatollah again very soon. Although things ended badly for Chris and WCW, the company did give him a platform to show what he was capable of. It's a big loss for World Championship Wrestling, but at the same time, the company didn't really understand how good he was. The Undertaker's Sacrifice is up next on Raw. On Nitro, Bam Bam Bigelow wrestles Buff Bagwell. Bit of a weird pairing right there, but okay. 
Buff makes fun of Bam Bam before the two go to work. Bigelow makes Bagwell pay for being a cocky little shit but Buff Daddy comes back with a dropkick and Bigelow gets sent to the outside with a clothesline. The crowd are accepting Buff as a babyface by the way even though he's as arrogant as ever. Bigelow takes a face buster but Bagwell foolishly goes for a body slam and he gets squished under Bam Bam's weight. Buff gets choked out at the ropes and Bigelow looks to end it with a top rope senton. Buff moves out of the way and Bam Bam ends up taking another two clotheslines and a running crossbody but the referee takes a bump when Bigelow goes for a body slam. Buff gets dumped out of the ring, hardcore hack and chastity run down. Bigelow gets nailed with a kendo stick and he gets blasted with a fire extinguisher. And this was Buff's cue to pull off the blockbuster but he has absolutely no visibility. He waits for a moment before hitting his finishing move. And whatever WCW used here it must have been pretty awful seeing his fans are covering their mouths at ringside and Bobby Heenan can barely talk. Buff Daddy wins on Nitro, Bam Bam Bigelow faces Hack this week at Spring Stampede. The match here wasn't great but it is fascinating seeing people react to a babyface Buff Bagwell. The Ministry brings someone out for a sacrifice and Jerry Lawler thinks it's Stephanie. The King also wonders where Mr McMahon and his security team are right now but it looks like Vince is way too late as The Undertaker makes his entrance. Whoever that is is already on The Undertaker's symbol and whoever it is is about to get lifted high into the air. Undertaker says this is not the girl he wants but she'll have to do for now. We have all had that feeling on a Saturday night haven't we? We then cut over to Vince's private room where we see Stephanie safe and sound with her old man and it's then revealed that Ryan Shamrock is the one on The Undertaker's symbol. Yay, they found a good use for Ryan Shamrock. Taker says this is all Vince's fault and Vince is responsible for this. When The Undertaker looks at Ryan he sees Stephanie. It's time for Stephanie to come home and become part of the ministry because everyone has to answer to the higher power. That higher power is currently calling out to Stephanie McMahon. Undertaker speaks in tongues as Ryan gets lifted up. Kenny Boy was abducted earlier on so there's no one here to help her and this little piece of business gets wrapped up with Vince saying this. You stay away from Stephanie, you evil bastard! Raw ends this week with Rock and Triple H vs Big Show in a 2 on 1 handicap match. On Nitro it's the 4 way match featuring Flair, Hogan, DDP and Bill Goldberg. There's not much of a match to speak of here on Raw unfortunately, most of the time gets taken up with promos and post match tomfoolery. On Sunday night Heat Triple H said he owns D-Generation X, he was responsible for the creation of DX and that means he's gonna come down to the ring wearing a DX shirt while using the DX song as his entrance music. He tells the quote Nimrods in the audience you can all suck it just before The Rock comes out and once again the fans can't help but to join in on The Rock's catchphrases. You're Rudy. <laughs> this happens more than once, Rock gives up and he gives permission to the fans to join in and as mentioned earlier on you just know a babyface turn was coming up soon for the great one. The Rock was just way too popular to remain a bad guy. The Big Show makes his way down to the ring, he's now got his famous entrance music and we're gonna start here with Triple H and Show going at it in this Raw is War main event. Hunter takes a headbutt from the big man that knocks him down to the mat. This gets followed up with a backdrop and already Triple H wants to tag out. In comes Rocky and again things don't go too well for team corporate. A few clubbing blows to the back leave the Rock stunned and even though Rock's able to lay in a few punches all it takes is one headbutt to put the Rock down again. The former WWF champ decides to poke Big Show in the eyes before tagging out again and Triple H instantly takes a big boot followed by a backbreaker. Triple H gets a foot up in the corner and he climbs the ropes to get in a few punches. This plan falls apart when Show lifts Hunter up and Triple H gets slammed to the mat. Shane jumps on the apron and China grabs Show by the leg but this only leads to a very short advantage for the corporation. Hunter and Rock are really struggling here against this giant. When Show goes to chokeslam Rock, China runs in for a low blow. The crowd boos as the ref calls for the bell and now the big show has to fight off Rock, Hunter, China and Shane McMahon. The numbers are too much here and Show gets floored when Rock uses the smoking skull belt as a weapon. The great one even hits a corporate elbow on Big Show while the crowd chant for Austin. Stone Cold then makes an appearance and the crowd naturally lose their shit and while Austin's able to take care of the corporation he's unable to reclaim his property. Hunter ends up taking a stunner and a chokeslam but Rock gets out of the ring and Shane hands him the smoking skull belt. 
Shane wants the belt put up on the Titantron again, he tells Austin that this is a reminder that Rock owns a piece of the rattlesnake, so Stone Cold decides to make good on his promise and cost Vince a whole lot of money. He and Cho head up the ramp, Stone Cold tells the big man to pull the Titantron down, and this would have been pretty awesome had it not been for the piped in sound effects the production guys decided to use as the screen gets lowered. Austin then rips the screen to pieces just before Raw goes off the air, and it's kinda weird how this moment never gets replayed when WWE talk about famous moments in Raw history. The Zamboni and beer truck always get brought up, but I thought this was pretty cool too. Kevin Nash joins the WCW commentary team for this 4 way main event. All 4 men will be in the ring at the same time, the first one to score a fall wins the match. DDP and Goldberg fall out of the ring while Hollywood and Flair go to work. The world champ takes a backdrop and a few clotheslines, and after hulking up, Hollywood's able to hit the big boot and the big leg drop. The cameras totally miss the leg drop, by the way. DDP breaks up the cover, and we can see Paige has been busted open as he suplexes Hollywood in the ring. On the outside, we've got Goldberg no selling a few Ric Flair chops, and Rick gets sent back into the ring with a press slam from Billy Boy. The alliance between Hogan and Goldberg turns out to be short lived as the two fight it out on the entranceway. This gives DDP the opportunity to hit Flair with a diamond cutter, and Paige almost won the match here. Goldberg pulls Dallas out of the ring while Hogan goes back in. Flair gets launched off the top rope, and he almost didn't make it either. It's a bump Rick's took so many times, so I've no idea what happened here. Hogan then whips the Nature Boy a few times, and he threatens to hit Charles Robinson too, but Rick replies with a low blow, so I guess that makes it even. DDP and Goldberg then get in the ring and the competitors switch it up a little. Hogan completely forgets he's in a fatal four way and he walks away from Flair as the figure four gets applied to DDP. When Goldberg attacks Flair, Hogan's like oh yeah and he helps Bill break the hold. And Hogan then refocuses his efforts by delivering a back suplex to Goldberg while DDP and Flair fight on the outside. All four men end up brawling around the ring. Hogan and Flair fight beside the commentary table as Nash looks on. Back in the ring, DDP takes a power slam from Goldberg Goldberg, and gotta say, this match has been pretty good so far. The match ends with Goldberg spearing everyone, not even joking. You get a spear, you get a spear, everyone gets a spear. Hogan then gets jackhammered and Nash doesn't make it to the ring in time to break the cover, so Hogan ends up kicking out of the most feared move in all of WCW, not including the deadly chin lock. Sting said he'd be here with a message tonight, and there he is. This match is officially over, but the fans don't care. They're going absolutely nuts for the Stinger, and yeah, it's always good to see the icon. Sting gets in the ring, he points to one of the big screens in the arena, and a video plays that explains the Spring Stampede main event. Sunday, April 11th, pay per view. Following men will meet for the WCW World Heavyweight title in a four corners match. Ric Flair, Diamond Dallas Page, Hollywood Hogan, and the man they call Sting. The rules are simple. The man that gets the pitfall becomes the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. And last but not least, there will be a winner. And I will referee. Yeah. Raw wins reliving the war this week, but it was very close. Nitro had a better main event, and the in-ring action overall was generally better too. But the WWF produced a much more fun and entertaining show thanks to their ongoing storylines. The stuff with Undertaker scaring the shit out of the McMahons is good. Shane beginning to distance himself from Vince is interesting. Rock holding Austin's championship belt is a great way to keep the feud going. There's a lot to like about WWF right now post WrestleMania 15. Nitro wasn't bad, you will find better in ring action on the WCW side this week, but we still aren't getting good stories in WCW, and it does hurt the show overall. Raw's now on 91 points, Nitro's got 70 points, and we've still got 19 ties on our Reliving the War scoreboard. In the TV ratings, Raw slipped down to a 5.8 while Nitro jumped up to a 4.3. This would have been a relief for WCW, I'm sure, but still, the WWF continue to dominate their competition. 
Spring Stampede 99's up next and you don't want to miss this one. Scott Steiner vs Booker T for the US title, Rey Mysterio vs Billy Kidman for the Cruiserweight title, Goldberg vs Nash, the 4-way WCW title match. There's a lot to like about this pay-per-view so join me on Tuesday and we'll see what happened. Spring Stampede's getting bumped to next week to make way for a Christmas special on Sunday. Hulkamaniacs around the world rejoice as Santa with Muscles gets covered on the channel this Christmas Eve, so hopefully you come over for some festive fun this week on Wrestling Bios. Thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Reliving the War and please take care. Do you smell what The Rock is cooking? Rocks are loaded, about ready to spit a burst. All haters are unloaded, be ready to get his verse. I'm about to serve him notice and call him, don't get him burst. Send him down to unemployment, cause homie gon' get this work. Right. Hot friends, every honey gets got in. If she hops in, then more than likely we not friends. Look, I'm locked in. Hit you like Kelly, get top spin. First I pop, then I'm out like Pirelli's on stock rims. Stick to get, call me Ferrari, call me the go. I at least my name changed, now I ain't playing games. New York, for sure, call me NY. New York, for sure, call me NY. 50 here, call me Ferrari, call me New York. I at least my name changed, now I ain't playing games. New York, for sure, call me NY. New York.